Hey, Marcus. Hey, Shira. Welcome to the His and Her Money Show. Hey, guys. Hello. Hey. Thanks for having us. We're super duper glad to have you guys on the show. You all have an amazing story of paying off an amazing amount of debt. And so we can't wait for you all to be able to share that with everybody that is tuned in. But before we do all that, can you take a moment and introduce yourselves to everybody and let them know what you are all about? Okay, so um, my name is Shira Murray, and I am a wife and a mother of two wonderful children. Um, during the day, I am a nutrition educator at a local university, and we reside in Northern California. My name is Marcus, and I am currently working at a blood bank here in Northern California, and uh, that's my full-time job. I also am a musician at a local church here in my area. Uh, I also uh, am a part of an online music business, shameless plug, gospelmultitracks.com, <laughs> where we provide we, pro we provide music for uh, churches that don't have musicians and things like that. So, uh, yeah, that's a bit about myself. Great, great concept. We're going to talk about that a, that a little bit later because I'm sure that's probably a side hustle that you guys are doing, yeah. right? Okay, so we'll definitely talk about that. Uh, but let's talk about the debt that you guys had. How much debt was it? What type of debt was it? And how long did it take you to pay it off? Yeah, so we had approximately $110,000 uh, worth of debt, and we were able to pay that off in about two and a half years. We Wait a minute. Yeah, you heard Hold that right. On. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me get my calculator out. Wait a minute here. <laughs> Say that one more time. Okay, so we were <laughs> able to pay off $110,000 worth of debt, and we did it in about two and a half years. Whoa. Yeah. We're going to have to get into that, but continue on. Okay. <laughs> um, so um, we incurred a lot of debt early on in our marriage. So um, that was um, a condo that we purchased. And I had about $30,000 in student loan debt and credit card. And is that about it? Credit card, student loan. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty much that, that was the bulk of our debt. Student loans and house, credit card. So. Yeah. So what you all said is not abnormal. Uh, student loans, credit card, condo, it's something that most people have. But at some point for you all, uh, something clicked and you said that although this is typical, most people have a student loan, credit card payment, and a mortgage, you all said, I don't want to live this life. I want to live something different. What caused you all to even begin to think about paying off all this debt? Well, I mean, I mean, I think we were just in the rat race of paying our bills and, you know, just kind of getting by me. I just thought that's what life was, was you, you have those bills, you would make the minimum payments and, you know, eventually, you know, it would it would you would finally would pay them off. But uh, it, it came a point where I think what it was is when, when we had we started having our children, you know, when I had my son, uh, I started reevaluating things, you know, and there was a point where. Uh, financially, you know, we weren't bringing a lot of money in and, you know, we weren't, we were kind of struggling even to make the minimum. So, you know, that kind of started us saying, you know, we need to, we need to educate ourselves financially. We started, you know, doing that. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's kind of what triggered it for me was when we had our children, you know, I said, you know what, we, we got to figure this out. We can't keep, cause if we keep doing it like the, the current way we're doing it, it's, it's, it's not going to work out for us. So, uh, you know, that was a big kind of, Eye opener for me. Yeah. So talk about the conversation because I'm sure you probably both didn't come to this at the same time. Like, hey, we have this great idea. So one of you probably thought about it and you approached the other spouse. Talk about that conversation that you had. Yeah. So uh, the first conversation that we had, I would consider it our our rock bottom. Right. And that was when um, we had more bills than we had income. <laughs> And um, thankfully, we had some some savings, and that savings kind of helped us to get over um, the hump at that time. And um, shortly after that, um, I re-entered the workforce because I had stopped working um, after the birth of our first child. And when we um, got had that additional income, um, we didn't adjust our lifestyle. Right. So we didn't say, "Let's go buy a new car," or "Let's yeah. upgrade the condo for something bigger," or "For something better." And um, we started to crunch the numbers 
And uh, we found that we were able to actually live off of uh, Marcus's income and all his side hustles. You know, that, that was able, you know, that was enough for us to meet our, our financial obligations. And so we started to throw my income at the debt. And so that's what kind of got us jump started to, um, to paying everything off. And going back a little bit, um, like I said, we began to ed- educate ourselves financially. So we would listen to different, uh, you know, money gurus and stuff like that. We would just pick a little from from each one. And they also served as inspiration. You know, that's kind of how we started the conversation. Like, man, you know, we, we want to do this, too. You know, so let's 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 really set this goal of, you know, cutting off all the debt and, and you know, going back to the side hustles and stuff. I just my mindset was I need to increase the income any way I can. So let me do this little thing here. Let me c- try to come up with this business idea and whatnot, because I wanted to increase the income so that we could use just her income for debt. So that was kind of the, the, the goal or the strategy, I guess. Yeah, I think for a lot of people on, on their journey to debt freedom, they kind of hit a roadblock when they hear us talk about side hustles and they're like, man, what can I do? I, I, I'm not good at anything or I can't do this and I can't do that. For you, you took it on as a personal mission because you wanted to figure out a way for you all to be able to live and maintain your lifestyle based on just one income. So talk about your process of figuring out the type of side hustles that you could do and then talk to us about the side hustles that you came up with because somebody listening might be able to glean some ideas from you all. Okay. Yeah, okay. So so I'll I'll talk about my process of re-entering the workforce and then I think you can expound on some of the things that you were able to do. So um so I had a baby and then I got pregnant again really quickly. <laughs> That's our story. <laughs> yeah, and so um you know, I was on Craigslist. It's hard for me to sit still and I was maybe 5 months or so pregnant and I saw this job and I said, "Man, this would be my dream job." if I wasn't pregnant. But I said, you know what, I'm gonna apply anyway. And I don't recommend this for people, but what I did was I bought a big blazer, I tucked in this baby, I put a girl on, I tucked that baby in, and, <laughs> and I went in there and I got the job, you know? So, you know, so I was able to re-enter the workforce and that, that was helpful um, at the time. And so. Right. Yeah, as far as side hustles, uh, I just, I, I'm a musician and I, I say, well, what can I do? to use that, you know, use the gifts that God has given me mm-hmm. to, you know, supplement income. Now, um, I was already playing at church, you know, at my ch- local church and everything. So that was some income that I had coming in just from, just from, you know, they, they blessed me for, you know, helping the music ministry there. And I was able to partner with, uh, uh, online company that does tracks for churches that don't have musicians. Mm-hmm. So from home, I was able to produce, and create uh, this music where we pretty much carbon copy popular songs and you know the profits are split amongst the artists myself and the partner that I partner with so you know the more you hustle in that the more income you could potentially make so I just really got serious about it and and just dedicated any off time from my secular job I dedicated to this uh, so you know that the, the, the ceiling was was kind of you know there was no ceiling on that so i just kind of hustled as hard as i could to bring in as much as i could and you know it's just tapping into whatever your gifts are everybody's gifts are different yeah that that was something i was going to say it sounds like that your side hustles that you guys um chose to do is something that you love doing anyway so i love that but shira once you got the job and they found out you was pregnant were they like okay did they ask questions like oh yeah so over the weekend I popped like my body already knew what to do. So I expanded. And so, <laughs> and so I did get a couple of side eyes, but you know, it is what it is. And you know, they cannot, you know, discriminate against you because of pregnancy. You know, there are laws against that. So I just, you know, use the law, you know, for, for my advantage. And so it ended up working out and it was, you know, gr- a great um, experience. And I got in and I, I really worked hard. And so when I had to take maternity, maternity leave, it wasn't an issue. Now, you guys were in the midst of a hustle season. That's what we like to call it, your hustle season. So Shira re-enters the workforce. Marcus is working a day job plus a bunch of side hustles, not to mention you guys are newly parents. 
That is a whole lot of moving pieces, okay? We love to tell people to hustle because you're, you're just doing it for a season so you can get out of debt quicker. But talk to us about how communication must have had to take place heavily for you all not to lose yourselves, not to get disconnected while you all are hustling hard to get out of debt. Yeah, so um, when we decided to go on this, this debt-free free journey, um, one of the good things about our relationship is that we're friends first mm -hmm. and we were friends first before we, you know, even started dating, we were friends for a while and we've been married for 10 years. And so just having that history, you know, allows, allowed us to, to connect better, um, to, to reach this goal. Um, one of the things, um, about Marcus is that he works an, a night job mm -hmm. and because he works nights. We, we don't see each other a lot, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just something that comes with the territory, but we do find time to connect. And when it comes to our finances, we do find time to to talk about, um, you know, what our goal is. And when we're on the journey to, you know, check in to see where we are, mm -hmm. you know, where where are we, you know, and are we going in the right direction? Are we being disciplined in our spending? You know, mm -hmm. and we just kind of uh, we were accountable to each other mm -hmm. and. Um, definitely communication is a difficult thing, but, you know, just try to be, you know, respectful of each other. We are two different individuals, um, but we have the same goal, you know, and so we definitely kept that in mind. Yeah, communication was was huge, uh, like how she said, with us having off shifts, mm -hmm. uh, which actually the off shift thing was kind of strategic, too, because we were able to save on um, daycare. Yeah. So that was that was a blessing. So. Right. Thank you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, like how she said, just the communication and uh, going back to something, uh, just when you're talking, you, you're, you're sometimes you're on different wavelengths with your partner. Uh, so, you know, just having that understanding, you know, Shire is is very she likes to uh, vision cast and like she likes goals and she likes. So what are we doing after this? OK, well now after that, then what? You know, whereas me, I'm more about, oh, well, I'm handling this now. I kind of get tunnel vision, whatnot. So, you know, we, we know our, our different personalities. So uh, that helped too, you know, with, with the uh, conversations and things like that. So now I heard you mention that you guys lived off one income and took the other income to throw out, throw out debt. Was there any other strategies that you guys put in place in order to knock out this debt a whole lot sooner besides the side hustles and this, the other job? Yeah. Well, we, we, um, did listen and take glean a lot from uh, Dave Ramsey. And, uh, you know, as far as the, the baby steps we didn't go verbatim but we paid off the smallest debts first the credit card debts and then we you know rolled that over into student loans and then we began to after we got that done we began to chew at the um, the mortgage and we just you know it was kind of just like you know we just hit one at the other and we, and we we took time I think it's important to take time to celebrate each time you you make a payment or each time you you you're done with this and with that because it keeps you motivated. So uh, that was one of the strategies. Um, Shai, was there any? Yeah, that's basically what we did. Yeah. We got really excited about each payment. Yeah. Right, right. Talk about how you all would celebrate oh, when you all would knock out something. Um, what would you all do to kind of celebrate that moment? Do you really want to know? <laughs> <laughs> you're right. Uh, no, no, okay. So what... <laughs> So, um, Marcus, he would, so we would save for a couple months right. and then Marcus would like screenshot, you know, what was in the bank and say, you know, can I, can I make this payment? Right. And then sometimes I'm like, hold off or right. like, go ahead. And okay. There's a song. I don't know if it was the nineties <laughs> or if it was in the two thousands, but <laughs> back in my worldly days, there was a song by Ludacris <laughs> called drop, dropping bones, <laughs> drop, dropping bones on them. You know that song. So we would play that song. Right. Oh, right. Bows, yeah. <laughs> so we would you know play a song and just get hyped you know right, right. and you know just celebrate each step right okay. that's awesome now i heard you guys mention that you also started to pay off the mortgage and now you're mortgage free like that's amazing how does that feel you know to be able to own a place where your children can come and can't nobody can take it wait from a minute you. your house is paid off too yeah. yes, yes. and you guys are not playing no yeah. games now here's the here's the cool thing though uh is that we jumped in the market right after the crash mm -hmm. so we really lucked out i mean there was a there was a point in time 
we were just married and it was when when it, the market was just going crazy oh five oh six and i thought you know i'll never own a home like that's that's just i had just said we're just gonna live in apartments this is gonna be our life because the market was crazy but you know unfortunately the crash you know came but we were able to kind of dive in right after that and here in california you know we were blessed to get a, our house at a very affordable rate so you know we we were a little fortunate in that but we just we just attacked it because we said well if we were blessed and we we were able to get in with with it at this price why why play with it why go through the 30 year process when realistically we should be able to to knock it down faster so we just we just went yeah. full head with it yeah yeah that's awesome yeah how does that feel it feels good it feels good it's very freeing every time you open that door you know when you come into your home right the house just you know and it's a starter home it's a it's a uh uh what you you know could call a, a condominium it's you know or a townhome but yeah it's paid off it's paid off does your credit score have you down and looking for solutions? You may just find the answers you're looking for with Credit Sesame. Credit Sesame is your solution for a free no-hassle credit score, credit analysis, and tips for managing your money. They are here to help you take control of and have the tools you need to bring about a bright financial future. Get empowered today. There's no credit card required. Receive identity theft protection up to $50,000 and discover a marketplace for credit and loan officers that will help you get to your next level. Visit hisandhermoney.com forward slash credit sesame for more details. Now, along the way, guys, you, you guys did, I mean, six days work of debt in two years is insane. It's incredible. It's amazing. I'm sure that along the way that some obstacles had to pop up. This couldn't have been all just peaches and cream from start to finish. Talk to our audience about some of the obstacles that arose and how you guys were able to overcome them and continue to move forward. Yeah. So um, one, one of the obstacles was just, you know, accepting the different uh, mindsets that, that we had. So Marcus, he kind of had that tunnel vision and I was already, you know, I worked the numbers and in my mind, it's like, oh, it's already done. What are we going to do next? You know, so just, um, you know, just being re respectful of each other's um, perspective of where we of where we were financially. And um, also, I moved into another position and um, it's out of town and it required me to commute. So we we ended up making a, a car purchase. We were able to purchase it, it cash, but um, we um, had to use some of our, our savings. So that kind of, uh, you know, took a couple months off of, you know, our, our goal. Mm -hmm. And then you had something. Yeah. It's, it's like, like I said, we, we got a starter home. So, you know, my friends and coworkers and just people in general, you see them buying these beautiful houses and you're like, hold on, wait a minute. You know, I, I you know, yeah. But that was a big struggle for me because I would show Shark, Hey, look at this house. You know, we, we like to visit open houses in our area. It's like, man, we could afford this. You know, you, you just want to stop where we're at. I mean, we make we did all right. Let's just stop here. And, 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 and but, you know, that wasn't what our heart was telling us to do. That was just kind of side noise that, you know, you, you, you have to block out when you're really trying to focus on a goal. So yeah. that was a struggle for me. Definitely. Love it. So walk us through that moment when you guys paid off that last payment to that mortgage company. Yeah, we, we really just wanted to go into the bank and drop bows on them. <laughs> To say, did the ludicrous come with y'all or <laughs> yeah we wanted to go in with like a bunch of pennies and just like take this <laughs> but um you know it, it's funny because we were we paid all our bills online so we wanted to go in and just kind of finalize and close it out but they there's so many steps with that last payment you know it's like they want to keep you there so bad you got to go through this step and that step but we were able to uh you know get it done and and we we mailed it mailed a cashier's check and uh, we were remember we were at the post office just kind of like, you know, celebrating it like yeah. this is it, you know, and, and the timing was perfect because it was Juneteenth weekend. And yes. we thought that was very special because, you know, it celebrates the, uh, you know, freedom, your slaves being free. And it's like, you know, we were being free from this this debt slavery, yes. you know, so we're, we were excited about that. And it was like really, you know, good, good timing. So uh, we were really excited that day. So, yeah. You know what? Let's let's talk about that. I don't think that we've ever asked that question ever on our show, YouTube. This is in the I guess we're not. Yeah. 
But how does that feel being an African American and you can a- actually say that you're debt free? Man, it's it's I think it's it's awesome because you know that's kind of uh, what what we talk about a lot is like family wise historically like we don't talk about finance like my mm-hmm. my parents I had two parents blessed with you know two parent family like they never talked finance we were never taught finance it, you know so that's something that we just kind of keep to ourselves but uh, you know that's kind of like why I, we love what you all do yeah. uh, and and what we try to do as well is to share that testimony of a black couple being, you know, uh, debt free and how awesome that could be and how freeing that is. Because I just like, I just think, you know, it's, it's not really talked about a lot. Well, in my background, it wasn't talked about a lot. So yeah, yeah I think it's an awesome thing. Yeah. We have definitely, you know, have taken, we've taken the time to, um, to educate ourselves in the area of finance and we're still, you know, learning more mm-hmm. and we are happy to be able, you know, to pass this knowledge on, you know, to our kids and to those who may, you know, view our YouTube right. page. So right. yeah, it's definitely meaningful. It means a lot to us as well too. I mean, we know that there are um, a lot of us out there that are debt free. We're millionaires. We're doing it. But I think that we don't see a lot of us, you know, right. even though we're out there, we don't see, we, we don't see a lot of us, you know? And so I think that that's why it's important even to Talon and I, you know, we have this platform and it's for anybody. Uh, but we do take pride in our heritage and we do take pride in, you know, we're going to be some of the first in our family to be able to say, yeah. you know what, we own our home, you know, and that's empowering to us. It yeah. is. And you know, what I think the cool thing is too, is that there's no, there's no hating when you see a, black couple or someone doing it a lot of times when you know in our culture there's a lot of that that hater aid right there is like you know but i think it's a beautiful thing when we are able to celebrate each other you know, so. right i love you guys i really really do i uh, when you guys emailed us i'm like mm, i've never heard of them before so i went to your youtube channel and i'm just watching your your videos and i'm smiling and i was just sure. so excited like that's what I'm talking about. Another couple, let's do this. You know, so I love that. I think that if we can all come together and encourage each other and celebrate each other, I think that we'll go further for sure. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Right. So you guys are debt free. I mean, yes, two year incredible journey. What have you been able to do post debt freedom that you would have never been able to do had you still been shackled with all of that debt? Well, it hasn't been that long. <laughs> yeah, it's still kind of fresh, but yeah, it's still kind of fresh. Ooh, three, three months, maybe three months. Yeah, maybe about three months. Yeah, yeah, it's it's still really new. But one of the things that we have been able to do is we're putting our son into private school, and mm-hmm. so we're able to afford that. That's something that we wouldn't have even considered mm-hmm. before. So we're really um, glad that he's going to going to be starting at a really good school. Mm-hmm. And um, we are starting um, college savings funds for our kids. And so just excited about that and excited about um, our ability to now be able to save more for retirement. So that's great. And one of the questions that we did not ask you guys, um, did you tell your family and friends about this journey that you guys wanted to become debt free? And how was their responses? That's a good one. See, I'm the type of guy like, you know, while I'm going through it, I don't like to really advertise it, uh, you know, I didn't, because I spoke with about it earlier, it might not be haters, but it's just kind of naysayers, or they may look at you like, oh, you you know, do you think you're, you're, you're more than, or, you know, I didn't want any of that, so we kind of kept, kept, kept it close to the vest while we were doing it, uh, and then once we accomplished the goal, now we, we use it as a springboard as a testimony, not like to boast or brag, but just to like, share with others so now you know we, we we did tell our family once we actually met the goal and it was like well received and you know hopefully we encourage other family members to to do the same you know yeah and um the we're having um more interesting conversations with our family members and our relatives now um that they've seen our our youtube page so i know um i had some nice uh conversations with uh a few of Marcus's aunts. And right. so like everybody in his family is married, which is really, which is really a blessing. And I'm kind of like the young buck, still kind of the person you still, you know, it's only been 10 years, you yeah. know, they have all these years. I'm about to say, you got 10 years in the game. What you mean? <laughs> right, now, right. I'm, I'm up against like 30s, yeah. 
close to 40 years. Like we're still young, you know, right. compared to a lot of his family. So, you know, I had these, these women pull me in the kitchen. And it's like, well, okay, I love your channel, but let me tell you, you know? <laughs> and so we just had a really, you know, great conversation. So I'm glad that we kind of opened, opened the door, you know, right. so we can talk about uh, more things other than, you know, how good the sweet potato pie is. You right. know, we can, you know, actually talk about, you know, finances and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm learning from them and, you know, they're really appreciating the work that, that we're doing and the journey that we've started. So it's, it's been good. Speaking of your journey, uh, I'm sure it had some ups and downs. You shared some of that, some twists and turns. Overall, what type of impact did this journey have on your marriage? You want to go? Um, well, I just think it changed our conversation. Uh, like I said before, early on in our marriage, like I was re- very, you know, tunnel vision kind of, you know, like, so I, I like to keep the, the, the bills paid. I'm making money. We, we were able to pay that bill that month on to the next month. Whereas Shire really loves goals. She's really yes. goal oriented. Yes. And it's not that I didn't have goals. It's just that I really want to make sure our current situation is taken care of before I move on to the next one. But so there were some kind of we, we kind of had some quarrels early on with that. But then when we when we decided to to make take this journey, now we had our goal were aligned you know so it 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 helped you know yeah it, you know less less money arguments because now yeah. we know we're shooting for this goal everything is 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 pointing towards this this end result so yeah and one of the things that we did was we went to walmart and we got these big huge um right. poster boards or not like well, dry erase boards whiteboard yeah. whiteboards and we put them on the wall and then we wrote out our you know our goal so we talked about it and wrote it out. And so every day it was kind of a visual reminder Mm -hmm. of things that we are not only, you know, we're, we're seeing it every day, but you know, kind of becomes ingrained in your psyche. You're thinking about it, you're praying about it, you know? And so that definitely helped, you know, Mm -hmm. and moving forward now that we have the debt paid off, you know, that's something that we continue to do. We continue to write on, on our boards and, you know, and basically share our goals and visions in that way. And if there are any single people that are, are watching, I would like to say like, Goals are so attractive. <laughs> like they are so attractive. You want a woman, get you some goals and, and they will come. <laughs> so true. I love that. So what has been the biggest life lesson that you guys learn throughout this entire journey? Uh, me, I just learned uh, that, you know, if, if you set a goal and you're consistent in your process, that you can accomplish anything. You know, there are times where I thought, Man, this this number is too big. Like we're we're not gonna do this. Uh, we we've come far enough, you know. But uh, what I realized when finishing and when paying off the final payment is, I can do it. You know, I set a goal. We 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 set the goal together, and we were actually able to accomplish it because we were consistent. So that's like a life lesson that really you know reigns true to me. Yeah, consistency and and patience, and then patience. Uh, being willing to learn. Right. You know, because it was an area that we didn't know a whole lot about. And so the importance of just, you know, educating yourself, not just, you know, in regards to finances, but in other areas as well to have a have a student um, kind of mentality. Right. Right. Speaking of having a student mentality, you all said in the beginning that one of the first things you all did mm-hmm. was you began to educate yourself and learn. And that propelled you forward on this journey. So are there some book recommendations that you would give out if somebody was trying to get that same level of knowledge in this area? Yeah. So one of the things that I noticed in reading different books is that uh, different authors will have different philosophies. And uh, the good thing about that is we were able to to pull different things, you know, from each each person. So we I think the first book that we read was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And that's by Robert Kiyosaki. Um, And then we got uh, Dave Ramsey's book. And um, we got a automatic millionaire by David Bach. So we um, listened to that on audiobook. And um, the book that I'm reading now is called The Wealth Choice. And that's by Dennis Kimbrough. And um, I'm glad, you know, happy to be moving into that area because right. now that the debt is paid off, it's time to start thinking about wealth. And so um, the book so far has been really inspiring. Yeah, definitely. Um, in that same vein, I've been reading, currently I'm reading a uh, Hip Hop to Homeowners by Jay Morrison. It's it's a really interesting book. Uh, he just you know speaks about uh, building using real estate as a investment tool. 
So uh, it's, it's really interesting. And, and along with the other books that Shire talked about, you know, yeah, I think it's just good to get a broad perspective and then make your own personal, you know, set your own personal finance strategy. Absolutely. We totally agree with that. So speak to that person right now that may be listening in. Uh, they were a little discouraged in the beginning. They didn't really feel like they could do this. But after hearing your story, they think that maybe it's possible. So speak to that person right now and encourage them on this journey. Yeah. So um, the thing that I would would recommend is to not um, be discouraged by your your present uh, situation or your present circumstance and to know that when you're facing different challenges or when you're on this journey to just know that um, that it's 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 all a part of the journey you know to have ups and downs and that it's not the end you know of your story and one of the things that I like to do is I like to listen to motivational speakers and I thought of a quote um, by Les Brown and he was talking about what to do you know when you're at walk when you're at rock bottom and the thing that he suggests or that he says rather is that if you can look up you can get up and so you know my word of encouragement is just to is to keep going um, clarify that vision and um, get clear goals and to take actionable steps towards them and, and you'll be able to accomplish your goal. That's good. That's really good. I'm not, my little two cents is just, you know, keep it simple, you know, uh, less money out, more in and and every little bit counts. Every payment that you make towards that debt, you're getting one step closer to your goal. So uh, there's no small amount. There's no, oh, this, you know, just just stay uh, encouraged and, and you can do it. You can do it. If we can, anybody can. Yeah. That's how I look at it. Good stuff. We know everybody yeah. wants to get connected to you guys. So tell them all about your YouTube channel and how they can stay connected to you. Wow. Okay. Well, first of all, I just want to thank you guys for this yes. opportunity. Yes. Um, our YouTube channel, our kind of movement that we've kind of, you know, started is, is black, married and debt free. On social media, it's just black, married, debt free, no and. But we're on YouTube and um, we just kind of organically wanted to just share our story and just kind of, you know, do it in our way. You know, really, really concise, short videos, a uh, little comedy in there. Uh, I'm a musician, so, you know, the mu there's music beds in there and, and you know, just a kind of a fresh delivery of the, of you know, the financial message to our age group, you know, young married couples. Um, you know, not just African American, but you know, that's who we are, you know, so that's kind of why we titled it that. But, uh, you know, it, we just, we were so lucky in creating this to research, doing our research and, and find you all who are, you know, preaching a very similar message. And it's just a great thing, you know, to see other couples doing it. And it's just encouraging to us it's like, oh, we are kind of on the right track, you know? Yes. So it's just, uh, be, 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 feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Black Married Debt Free. And uh, we're talking finance. You guys definitely check them out. When I was watching them, it was almost like watching ourselves. It was like, oh, that's our brother and sister. Yeah. So you all check them out. Subscribe to their channel. Follow them. You all will love them. Say it one more time. Black Married Debt Free on YouTube. Uh, just type that in the search, search browser and you'll find us. Yep. And we'll definitely have all the links in the show notes as well. Marcus and Shira, this has been incredible. Your story is amazing, yeah. and we're so glad that you all were able to take some time out of your busy schedule to share it with our audience today. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah.